Hi, this is Miss Fitzmaurice, and this video is an explanation of velocity versus time graphs. Okay, so what you should get out of this video is you should be able to look at a velocity time graph and tell me what an object is doing. You should be able to use a velocity time graph to find acceleration, velocity, and displacement. Okay, so the first thing we have to talk about is positive and negative velocity. So I want you to think back to SpongeBob. So I'm going to shrink this down and make you a SpongeBob. And so here we have SpongeBob. And I want you to think about what kind of movement he would have to do to make this graph. Okay, so at the beginning we can see that he's moving at a speed of 2 meters per second. And in general, we usually make positive to the right, negative to the left. So at the beginning, he's moving 2 meters per second to the right. Okay, but he's speeding up for a while. Okay, so right here. He's speeding up. Then he's going to go at a positive or at a constant speed, and then he's going to slow down. Okay. The point is that if you have a velocity time graph, any time, so I'm going to color it in. Any time your velocity is above zero, your object has a positive velocity. and you could say moving forward or maybe moving up if it's up and down instead of right and left okay on the other hand if your velocity is below the t-axis here you have negative velocity and that would mean that Spongebob oh no it's all attached now SpongeBob would be moving to the left. Okay, so we have a negative velocity. Moving back, or we could say to the left or down. Okay, so my tablet just shut down and it may have deleted part of the video. So we're going to start this again. If this is a confusing statement, don't worry. I'm just going to go over this. So I want to know what would SpongeBob have to do to make this graph? You're going to draw the graph. Don't worry about the numbers and write down what you think the answer is. Pause the video while you do that and I'm going to tell you the answer. Okay, so he starts out. He's walking at 3 meters per second. He's walking forward or to the right. Okay, but you can see his velocity gets smaller and smaller. So what that means is he's slowing down. Okay, so all throughout this red line, that's what he's doing. Okay, at this point, he actually has a zero velocity for a split second. So he stops, and then right here he starts actually having a negative velocity, so he turns around, he walks backwards, and I'm having some issues with my pen but he's walking backwards, pretend this says backwards and because these are bigger and bigger numbers we know that he is speeding up okay so I've circled two more graphs 
and I want you to sketch those in your notebook. Again, don't worry about numbers or anything, but do label the axis, velocity, time, and I want you to tell me what SpongeBob or anyone would have to do to make that velocity time graph. So write that in your notebook, write your prediction, and then unpause the video. Okay, so for number one, it starts out with a zero velocity, so at the beginning he's at rest, and anytime you see at rest it means your velocity is zero. Okay, and then speeds up, and because this is above the x, the t axis, so speeds up or accelerates. going forwards, okay, and then at this point right here, starts slowing down, but still forwards, so it slows, but again still forwards. This is not working out for me. Okay, so number two starts out going negative, so walking backwards at first. Okay, so walking backwards, but slowing down. Okay, um, slowing down at this point right here, it's going to come to a stop. Okay, and then afterwards, it's going to be heading forwards. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is how you find acceleration on a velocity time graph. Okay, so acceleration is really the rate of change of velocity. And what that means is that acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time, okay, and really that's rise over run here, so acceleration is really the slope of velocity time graph. Okay, so for example, what if I wanted the acceleration at one second? Okay. All I would have to do, I know acceleration is rise over run, so I pick two points. I'm going to pick these two. Okay. And it looks like my rise is from 2 to 4, so that's 2. My run is from 0 to 2, so that's 2. And my acceleration is 1 meter per second squared. Okay, here I can see the slope is zero, so all along this line I have a is equal to zero. And then all along the last line, actually I want you to try this out for yourself. So take a second and try this out. Pause the video and acceleration is going to be again rise over run. I'm going to take these two points right here. Okay, the rise is from 4 to 0, so that's a, actually a fall, so that's negative 4. And the run is from 4 to 6, so that is 2. And my acceleration is equal to negative 2 meters per second squared. And again, I apologize for the pen problems. Okay, the last thing that I need you to be able to do is I need you to be able to find displacement. Okay, so first of all, what is displacement? Displacement is change in position.
And notice I've just written x for position. Okay, we can also write this as delta x, that's triangle x, or x minus x naught, that's final minus initial position. Okay, so if you want to find the displacement from a velocity time graph, the first question you have to ask is between which times? Okay, so say I want the displacement between 2 and 4 seconds. All you have to do is you have to find the area under the graph. And that will give you the displacement. So find the area, and what I literally mean is that you are going to go back to your favorite geometry days, and you're going to say, okay, the area from 2 to 4 under this line is a rectangle, okay, it has a base of 2, because from 2 to 4 is 2, it has a height of 4, so the area delta x from 2 to 4 seconds is base times height, and that base times height is 2 times 4, which is 8 meters. Okay, so if I wanted the displacement instead from 6 to 8 seconds, then I need to go ahead and find this area. Here's the trick though, because this is underneath the t-axis, so this is negative, I'm going to get a negative number. Okay, I have a triangle, so I know delta x is going to be one half my base times my height, because that's how you find the area of a triangle. Here we have one half. The base is from six to eight, so that's two. The height is from zero to negative four, so actually I have a negative height and I get a displacement of negative 4 meters. That means Spongebob, or whoever made this graph, walked backwards 4 meters between 6 and 8 seconds. Okay, and finally, here's my summary. To find acceleration on a velocity time graph, you take the slope. To find change in position, or displacement, between times A and B on a velocity time graph, you need to find the area under the graph. Hopefully this was not too painful with the pen problems, but hopefully this will help you start to try the rocket problem.